Well, this seems like a pretty obvious question, right? Everybody knows that Martina Navratilova was crazy good, but only some people actually recognize that she has one of the most substantial cases to be considered the one and only goat of tennis. Trust me, that's not an exaggeration. I got your attention now? You don't think so? No. Nope. Well, let me try to change your mind. Let's start from... Martina Navratilova was born to be a world-class athlete. It was inevitable. Her mother was an accomplished gymnast, tennis player, and ski instructor, while her grandmother had been a tennis player who reached number two in the Czech ranking before World War II. I guess tennis just ran through her veins. Martina started playing as soon as she could hold a racket. By the age of four, she was already hitting the ball consistently against concrete walls. By seven, she was training regularly under the tutelage of her stepfather. By 15, she was already a pro and had won the Czechoslovakia National Tennis Championship. Wunderkind stuff, right? In 1973, she began to play Grand Slams on a regular basis. Only one year later, she won the first of many, the 1974 French Open in mixed doubles with Colombian Ivan Molina. Her breakthrough year was to follow. In 1975, Navratilova reached the singles final of the Australian Open and the French Open, but that was not the most memorable thing. That year, she met her match, Chris Everett. Navratilova and Everett went on to start one of the most important and outstanding rivalries in the history of tennis. However, of course, they were far from being enemies. That same year, they won the French Open in doubles. The following year, they won Wimbledon together. At 20, Martina had already won three Grand Slams. Tennis definitely ran through her veins. And trust me, she was just warming up. Navratilova's breakthrough on the ladies' circuit marked a before and after in the history of women's tennis. She was unlike any player that had come before. Her playing style was incredibly aggressive and powerful. Her left-handed drive and one-handed backhand were more than dangerous weapons. Her backcourt game was fluid, intelligent, and strong. However, her best tennis came when she was serving and volleying. Her serve was extremely strong and accurate. Although she is best remembered for her raw power, she also had enough variation to surprise her opponents. To go along with that, she had some of the most precise and lethal volleys that the game has ever seen. As you can imagine, she was an absolute nightmare for her adversaries, especially during her serve games. While her attacking playing style seemed best suited to surfaces such as grass and carpet, Navratilova could play superbly on any surface. Even her earliest successes were on clay. Her game reading and outstanding footwork allowed her to successfully apply her serve and volley style on the slower surfaces. Yet, she also had no problem playing from the baseline if that's what the situation called for. As her resume shows, she was an excellent all-court player. She was cool, calm, calculating, and never gave in to pressure. She was also incredibly competitive and almost always found a way to impose her game to beat her opponent. While her game was based on attacking and being offensive, her defensive and passing shots are often underrated. Yet, that's not all. There are few players in history, male or female, who can say they revolutionized the game. Martina Navratilova is one of those few. That is not simply due to her talent or her playing style, as serve and volley was way more common at the time. It was because of how she prepared for the game. As her rival Chris Everett put it, Martina revolutionized the game by her superb athleticism and aggressiveness. Navratilova changed the game by how she approached training. Unlike the players at the time, she spent many hours in the gym, building up her muscles and gaining strength to dominate on the court. She even played basketball to improve her athleticism, jumping and footwork, exactly as Nick Kyrgios is doing these days. Just kidding. In the present, these things are absolutely normal for players, but Martina was years ahead of her time. Soon, many players started to imitate her training regime, not like they had much of an option if they wanted to avoid getting destroyed. Despite her young breakthrough on the circuit, it took Navratilova several years to win her first slam, which finally came in 1978 at Wimbledon against none other than Chris Everett. The following year, she would repeat the title one more time against Everett in the final. In addition, she reached the number one ranking. From that moment on, Navratilova did not stop. During the 80s, she entered her prime, playing steadily at a high level rarely seen before. Navratilova completely took over the women's tour, averaging a winning percentage of over 90% during that decade and finishing the year as number one in the world on five consecutive occasions. It is impossible to elaborate on each of her achievements because this video would last for hours, literally. Just to give you an idea, Navratilova won 15 singles Grand Slams, 25 doubles, and four mixed doubles during the 80s alone. In addition, she won six singles year-end championships finals and absolutely all the doubles year-end championships finals played in that decade. To say she dominated the competition would be a massive understatement. Her career is so long and successful that it is difficult to delimit when her prime began 
season and ended. It can be said that her best years in terms of results were from 82 to 87. In 1983 and 84, she won three Grand Slams per year, while in 1985 and 87, she reached the finals of all four majors. During 83 and 84, Navratilova was especially untouchable. Her style of play reached a high peak and she dominated the women's circuit completely, including her great rival, Chris Everett. In 83, she had a winning percentage of 98.9%, made by 86 wins and only one loss. She only lost nine sets in the whole year. She won every tournament she played except the French Open, and she did so in a crushing fashion. At Wimbledon, she did not lose more than five games in any of her final matches. At the US Open, she was even more lethal. She didn't lose more than three games in any match, except in the final, where she destroyed Chris Everett by a 6-1, 6-3 score, losing only four games. At the tour finals, she beat Everett again in the finals, this time even bageling her. That must have been frustrating for Chris. This is statistically the best season of the Open era, male or female, but Martina didn't slow down the following year. Throughout 1984, she went on a 74-match winning streak, another absolute record that stands to this day. That included a 13-tournament streak, winning everything in her path, including the French Open, Wimbledon, and the US Open, losing only five sets in the process. She was even close to winning the Grand Slam, all four Slam titles in the same year but lost in the Australian Open semi-finals against Helena Sokova. She bounced back by winning the Tour Finals without dropping a set. Oh, and just for the record, she did manage to win the year Grand Slam in doubles that year with her partner Pam Shriver, with whom Navratilova achieved a winning streak of 109 games between 1983 and 85. Another absolute record. Yeah. You heard right, Navratilova has the longest singles winning streak of all time and the longest doubles winning streak of all time. And she did those both simultaneously. That's goat stuff if you ask me. Of course, no one can reign supreme forever. At the end of the 80s, Navratilova's level began to drop, while a new generation of players emerged, a new generation that had adopted the way of training and playing that Navratilova herself had promoted. During the 90s, her career gradually faded, but she did reach three Grand Slam singles finals in that decade, winning her last major at Wimbledon in 1990. She made it to the Wimbledon final, her favourite tournament, four years later, at the age of 37, but lost to Conchita Martinez in a close match. Months later, in 1994, she retired from singles for the first time. From that moment on, Navratilova focused on her doubles career and attempted a few successful comebacks, but the most glorious part of her history was already written. However, Navratilova achieved one last feat before her final retirement when she won the 2006 Mixed Doubles US Open in tandem with Bob Bryan. That was her last Grand Slam tournament, more than 32 years after her first one. Yeah, another record. She was only a month away from turning 50. And guess what? That was, of course, another record. Man, I've already lost count of those. It's hard to argue that the Navratilova Everett rivalry is underrated, as it is considered one of the best in history. Still, I think many people fail to realize how truly incredible it was. Between 1973 and 88, those two tennis players met 80 times, with Navratilova leading 43 to 37. Of those 80 matches, 60 were finals, also with Martina leading 36-24. They usually met in the biggest stages, playing each other in 22 Grand Slam matches, including 14 finals. Everett and Navratilova dominated women's tennis and took it to a place of mass popularity previously unthinkable. From 1974 to 86, one of the two held the top spot in the year-end ranking. Just so you understand the level of dominance, from the 1981 Australian Open to the 1985 Wimbledon, Everett and Navratilova won a record 15 consecutive slams. Likewise, from the 1982 Australian Open through the 1987 US Open, they won 21 of the 24 major singles titles, and at least one of them played in each of those 24 finals. Talking about domination, right? Their rivalry has the classic and captivating clash of styles similar to that of Federer and Nadal, or McEnroe and Borg rivalries. As Everett was a baseline player, known for her consistency and counter-attack style, yet they played far more matches than any male classic rivalry. Also, they've even teamed up together on several occasions, not for a charity event or the Labor Cup. They eventually won a couple of Grand Slams as a pair. Although this is Navratilova's most remembered rivalry, she had other great ones. For example, against Tracy Austin, Yvonne Gulagong, and Hannah Mandelkova. She also had several clashes with another player many consider the GOAT, Steffi Graf. Most of the 18 matches between them happened when Navratilova was already out of her prime and when Graf was entering hers. However, the final score in their head-to-head -head was 9-9, to -9, with Navratilova even leading in slams. Few players have overcome their elite competition as notoriously as Martina. She has an 80% effectiveness against players who have been in the top 10, higher than the effectiveness of Federer, Nadal or Djokovic. The only top 10 players who has the record against her, having played more than 5 matches, is Monica Seles with a 10-7 record. And it is worth mentioning that Seles is just 17 years 
is younger than Navratilova. Well, I know this is an impossible question to answer. The choice of the goat is subjective. It depends completely on what each person gives more importance to. Whether it is Grand Slam titles, weeks at number one, records against main rivals, cultural importance, or whatever. What is not questionable is that Martina Navratilova belongs in that conversation. Beyond holding the two records for winning streaks in a singles and doubles and the best season of all time, Navratilova has a lot more to brag about in her resume. I mean, really, a lot. She has played 1,661 matches, more than anyone else in history and has won 1,442. More than anyone else in history. In addition, she has won 167 singles titles. More than anyone else in history. And 177 doubles titles. More than... Well, you get the idea. Longevity is also on her side. Besides holding by far the record of years between her first and last Grand Slam, she also holds the record of consecutive years winning at least one title. 21 years. She's also spent 323 weeks at number one in the WTA rankings, second only to Steffi Graf and Novak Djokovic. At the same time, no one can say she did not achieve success on all surfaces, as she won, among all disciplines, more than seven titles in every Grand Slam. In terms of Grand Slam titles, Navratilova has won 18 in singles, two at the French, three at the Australian Open, four at the US Open, and nine at Wimbledon. She has also won 10 mixed double slams and 31 doubles. Yes, you heard right, 31. More double slams than anyone in history, and by a big margin too. In the GOAT discussion, many just look at the singles numbers and disregard Navratilova, because some players have won more Grand Slams than her in that category. But in reality, no one has lifted more Grand Slam tournaments than her, who has been crowned champion 59 times. Yes, Martina Navratilova has won 59 Grand Grand Slams in total, more than Federer and Nadal combined. Oh, and I almost forgot, she has also won 8 WTA Finals singles and 13 doubles, another two all-time record. I could keep going for a while, but I think I've already made my point. Regardless of how you want to look at it, Martina Navratilova is one of the greatest players in tennis history. She may not be your GOAT, but no one who knows about tennis can deny that her name belongs in that discussion, and that's how good she was. Now is your turn. Let me know in the comments how good you think Navratilova was. Is she a GOAT candidate or not? If you enjoyed this video about this classic player, watch this one about another great one.